Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, today is Sunday. Uh, what the hell day is it, actually? Sunday, July 22nd. Duh. I knew that, actually. Sunday, July 22nd. Um, officially 12 weeks out from October 13th, MPC, Utah Classic, whatever. So, anyways, uh, a few things from last week. So remember last week I talked about I had plateaued from... 14 weeks out to uh, 13 weeks out to last week's weigh-in, um, the two-week stretch where I plateaued. Um, I'm going to go over that today. And, you know, we I made some adjustments last week that I talked about in last week's video. So if you didn't um, see that, go back and, and check that out if you have questions. Um, but my weight stuttered from July 1st through July, um, through last Sunday. Uh, those two weigh-ins were pretty pretty much identical as far as the average weight for the, those two weeks. And so I made some adjustments and I'm um, going to show you here how those adjustments panned out in this week, uh, which is which was 13 weeks out today, starting 12 weeks out. So let's take a, a quick look at um, the spreadsheet. For those of you who watch this for the first time and aren't really familiar with um, this spreadsheet that I built. So this is just a spreadsheet that I created for myself, something that helps me be able to track um, my uh, progress every single day. So <clears throat> last week I talked about how week 15 or 15 weeks out and 14 weeks out, uh, the average weight for those two weeks pretty much stayed as the same. And so I needed to make some adjustments. So those were my previous goals uh, for the week. It's about 2750 calories. And so for the new week, I was adjusting to uh, 3, 000, uh, 315 Carbs, 200 protein, 65 grams of fat. So I was averaging about, uh, or what I wanted to average is about 2,645 uh, calories, 2,645 calories. So as you can see, for the most part, throughout the entire week, um, did, uh, oh, sorry, that's all. So for the most part, throughout the entire week, I did a, uh, pretty much stayed locked in with those calories. Last night, which I'll talk about this number in a second, had a family barbecue um, for fireworks on Spanish Fork. But as you can see through the week, maintained pretty much. I didn't have a big day where normally in the previous weeks I've had at least one one to two huge uh, calorie days. So did a pretty good job last week, kind of gave in a little bit to him and had a good time at the at the barbecue. And so without that number, see 3768. If you notice, my average was about where I wanted it to be, but I'm going to factor that in. And the reason why I want to factor that in there for the week is because whenever I do have days like this, it takes a few days for it to catch up. So for today, for example, I weighed in at 211.4, which yesterday was so to pound up from yesterday. So I weighed in today at 211.4. And so I am actually going to keep these same macro goals for this week and try to minimize days like this. All right, but as you can see through those two weeks, so 15 weeks out, my average weight was 214.7. 14 weeks out, which was last week, my average weight was 214.1, which I considered a plateau. Made those adjustments and this week weighed in at average weight 211 and a half. And so already on track for this coming week to beat that as well. So workout times, calorie burn, and you see those all slightly improve every week. So I'm just getting stronger naturally. So, All right, so hopefully that made sense. So um, again, follow me on my fitness pal to see you know, as far as uh, what I'm eating. I don't, I don't necessarily follow any meal timing or food lists or anything like that. And you can see everything that I consume or everything that I eat throughout the week on my fitness pal. Connect with me there. Um, it's T Flex F L E K S. Um, just you know, look to add a friend there. But the reason I bring up last night, where you know I tracked pretty much all week and stayed within the goal of, of about twenty six hundred and forty five calories. Last night I had a big night. Thir uh, yeah, three thousand seven hundred plus calories. So if you notice this morning, my weigh in was two eleven. So it didn't really have a, a big impact, you know, maybe like a half a pound or something like that. Didn't even have an impact on my, on my weight. But <clears throat> for me, days like that will t will catch up with me. So if you look back at my spreadsheet, which I include a link 
in the comments every week, you can see that um, there's a correlation between like a big calorie day for me and about two days later, two to three days later sometimes, that weight starts to show up. And so I, I, I expect that to show up and so I've got to make sure that I stay on top of my training. Uh, training this week has been great. Um, still doing the elliptical, the bike, um, the heavy bag. I've adjusted my times a little bit because I, I get about 70 minutes of cardio. So I've adjusted to about 25 to 26 minutes on the bike. Again, resistance level 13, 14, 15. Five minute intervals or five minute increments, I, I adjust that uh, uh, resistance on the bike going up and then back down. Um, so 13, 14, level 15, and then level 14, level 13. Then I ride that out. And my goal has been to get eight, eight miles under 30 minutes. And I've actually been getting that under, under 27 consistently, but under 26 a few times this week as well, busting balls. Um, but um, so I do that. I also started uh, taking my interval timer that I have on my phone and I posted on my IG story a few times and done some other things that are somewhat just trying to be mixing it up a little bit. So shooting. So I've got a interval circuit that is 25 minutes for basketball and an hour for basketball, which is basically four minutes of constant activity, shooting, rebounding, you know, dribbling, whatever. And then one minute rest, and then I'll go in however many rounds that is. So, um, in the twenty-five minute circuit or the the um, one hour circuit, and so that's been a fun way for me. And I've been able to keep track of my pace, which I'll talk about in a second with my heart rate monitor. I've been able to keep track of my pace um, to be able to match, the, you know, the the calorie burn that I normally get with the bike or the elliptical and the and the heavy bag. So. Uh, <clears throat> A few things with with training this week. So, uh, coming my weight is moving along well. I think this coming Saturday I will get my body fat checked just to kind of gauge where I'm at. I sit, I'm you know I'm hovering around two ten to eleven. I would I hope that I'm somewhere just under thirteen percent body fat. Last time in competition at this same weight, I was at about thir you know twelve something twelve seven percent body fat. Um, which I want to get into the, I want to get into the low single digits. So uh, let six, 5%. So I've got another a solid, you know, 15 to 20 pounds to go. Um, if that is what my body fat percentage is, but you'll check it next week. I'll get us some video of, of me getting my body fat check next week. And is it vital to do that? No, I, I like to see the number. Um, I mean, the most important thing is that I can see the difference in the mirror, right? Um, and then the, the scale also helps me to gauge that. As well, but I guess I just want to see what my body, my muscle mass compares to uh, the last time I competed, being 37 this year um, versus, you know, like if I was 32 or something like that at the time, 33, I don't know. Um, but aside from that, oh, aside from training, so been hit, been hitting a, a little bit more specifically with, with weight. So I always talk about how my, my legs are my opportunity to improve so my leg development which yesterday actually landed on my knee weird and it's freaking jacked today so i'm hoping that this kind of eases up a little bit but been mixing my cardio up um but training i'm still, still training my legs very uh strongly but i've also been working on um my lats my lats and my back i really i feel like and now that i can start to see more muscle definition um that's an opportunity that i have to really improve on and to balance out uh, my body for October. Um, uh, aside from that, aside from training, you know, I, I've seen, uh, which is ex ex super motivating. I've seen a lot of family and friends who are getting up, getting active, and you know, as a as a father of six kids, like I I love getting out with my kids and training them and pushing them hard and driving them and. Um, something that's always that's also um, kind of changed for me is before I get home and I'd be like super tired in the afternoons, you know, and I take my kids to practice, whatever, or I'm taking them and train, and I would make them train, you know, and I would uh, run them through drills and stuff like that. And <clears throat> you know, really, I wanted to prove to them that you know I'm pushing them, so I'm gonna show them that um, whatever I make them do, I'd be, you know, I am able and willing to do myself and so I started training with them which is 
really tough, honestly. Um, but I started to build up my own strength and endurance and get back in to uh, better shape. So start taking advantage of those opportunities. And I, I look forward to getting out with them and doing that every single day. You know, uh, my kids, are my girls play soccer, my boys play football. Uh, my son, he just he was just in a community theater production uh, these last two nights. So we, you know, we're busy, and and so when I get those opportunities to get out and train with them, not only am I bettering myself, but I'm also spending quality time with them. And I, you know, I, I honestly could not have it any other way. And so something else that's that's helped recently as well as my girls play club soccer, and um, I noticed that, or myself too, parents will come and sit and watch, you know, their kids. But at club, you know, it's different than rec, and so I'm not over there coaching and pointing, you know, pointing directions and stuff like that, because I, I don't know soccer like that. Um, and so rather than sit there and watch, um, my sons and I, we either bring a football or bring our basketballs. And so we go do our own drills during that time, you know, maybe not the whole time that they practice, because they practice like a legit two hours straight. But, you know, for an hour, we'll get out and we'll shoot hoops, or we'll work on pass routes, or we'll work on foot speed drills for football. And so um, that has also been additional time that I've been able to find to not only spend time with my kids, um, but also get stronger myself and in better shape. So anyway, just, just some thoughts of perspective. You know, I know time is limited, especially with, with parents who have kids and you're running everyone around. You know, just look for opportunities uh, within what you do to become more active. And that, I feel, has, has really helped me um, this time around. So... Uh, two things. So I got a question from my good friend uh, Harris Matafada about my heart rate monitor, and he asked me like, you know, how do you check? How do you make sure you put it on? Can you can you demonstrate? So I'll go ahead and put this on and show you where how this goes. But it's basically, a, a wrist watch, and this has a sensor for this, which goes across your chest, right here, and and that's what I wear during my workouts only. I only I only train uh, with those on. So. Uh, Oh, a little bit of coming in. So, but I always get questions about, hey, what kind of heart rate monitor do you have? Do you use a Fitbit? So I don't use a Fitbit. I don't use like an iWatch or anything like that or an Apple Watch. I just use this thing. So this thing, let's see. So this thing secures right there underneath the pectoralos. See right there underneath the pectoralos. Um, and then this has a sensor in it. That reads to this thing. And both of these have, this is a, what is it called? Sportline brand, which you can actually just find at Walmart. Um, it's about 40 bucks or so. But you can also find, you know, the same thing or even uh, on different brands on Amazon for pretty good deals. Comparable, but pretty good deals. But I, so I use that thing, so I don't monitor off the machines or anything like that. I monitor off of this thing. And so that way I'm always consistent. But if you don't have one of these and you want to, you know, track calorie burn and stuff like that, the, you know, most machines, uh, car, the ellipticals or the stairs or the um, the bikes, they have the heart rate monitors on that. If that's what you have, just make sure that's consistent. Like, is it accurate? It doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, if it's as long as it's reading consistently on you and, and you're using that as a checkpoint um, or a milestone into your workout. But that's how I use it. Any extra credit activity that I get with family or friends, or sorry, with my kids, um, I don't track. Um, anything that you see in my spreadsheet um, is solely based off of uh, the reads during my workouts. So, moving along. Food feature. Every week I try to do a food feature uh, for this week. And if you, again, if you're on my, my fitness pal, you see that I do not... Um, I do not keep anything out of my diet. I manage my calories. If it fits in there and I want to use cal invest calories into a certain food, I will do that. Um, but my food features for this week are these, these two right here. So Kirkland brand tuna, Kirkland brand canned chicken breast. Um, I love tuna. So this I'll have here with some um, low fat mayonnaise, uh, which I'll, maybe I'll do a recipe with that one sometime. And some pickles because pickles are zero calories. Um, nice little crunch to my tuna and mayonnaise and into my wraps. But I always have these on hand for when I'm on the go. I don't have time to cook or I haven't cooked. I also have these all the time as well. I don't like this straight out of the can though. So typically I'll take this out 
and I will throw it in the pan for about five minutes just to like, I don't know, cook it down a little bit. I don't like it straight out of the can. But when I do that, then I'll season salt it a little bit because it's already a little salty. And then use some Laughing Cow cheese and on, on a wrap and then some salsa or something. So those are my two food features. Uh, you know, if you're ever on the go and you're looking, you know, trying to keep yourself on track, great way to get some protein, low fat, low carb, obviously very high protein. Um, shows, I didn't really have anything that really stood out to me this week. I just did a lot of music this week, um, typical music. Um... But there's a new show that I want to check out for this coming week to kind of keep me going through cardio, which is uh, Last Chance You Season 3. Now, I just watched episode one, and uh, I am hooked. In fact, I'm fighting trying not to watch it now so I can save it to use to uh, kind of keep my mind distracted during the hell of cardio. But... Those are my update, updates for this week. Macros are staying the same, which are recapped it again. 315 carbs, 200 protein, 65 grams of fat, which is approximately 2,645 calories. Um, my goal is to drop an average weight over the week, uh, a pound and a half per week. So um, last week's average was 211 and a half. So this coming week hopefully the next update video my average weight for the week is 210 and again my goal is to get down to the 190 sub 190 if possible and just be dry as heck so thanks for watching if you have any questions uh, like share subscribe if, you're, if uh, you do like what you're seeing and until next time